so uh, we got a little uh, some a little demonstration, a little show and tell, all the regular stuff I like for this channel. So I wanted to show you guys a bunch of flea market finds and yard sale stuff, and you know, just hunting in your region. Not everybody has a good region for this. Uh, tool, hand tools were pretty much just a northeast thing for a long time. Then it became an east coast. I'm sure just east coast maybe. Because I think in Florida they have a decent tool market as well. But anyway, this is a little farm fireman's axe I found. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about restoration. So what would you do with this? Well, it's not super usable. It's a, it's a fireman's axe. It's a pickhead axe. The pick is, you know, pick is for puncturing. And the bit is for... Uh, kind of going through the wall and opening up the hole even bigger so this punctures a hole this is really i you know what i i talked to someone from the uk and they were like our homes our apartments are not made of like wood so this wouldn't help <laughs> isn't that funny but uh so how i would restore this is i would drill holes in that it looks like someone already wanted to drill holes maybe that was me i don't remember but uh i've been drying this tongue out over a vent I don't know if cold air does too much. I know that uh, if a uh, air conditioner is operating correctly, uh, the cold air doesn't have any moisture in it. It should be dehumidified if the air conditioner is working right. But I don't know if the cold air does too much when it comes to shrinking wood and getting rid of moisture. So, yeah, I hate the paint too, but I'd probably leave it on this one. kind of looks okay. Um, yeah, sharpen it up a little bit. It's uh, really thick, but are you even going to use this? So, who knows if I would? Who knows if I would even thin that edge? That's really thick. That's really steep, though. Uh, let's keep showing you some stuff. So this one's a problem. I've been drying this one out. I've been drying this bad boy out. See that nail head that broke off? <laughs> nail head broke off, and there's a metal step wedge. So. I could probably get this. I could probably, you know, I could probably figure this one out. Oh, it has condensation on it. Is it wet outside? That's weird. Anyway, kind of a cool Michigan pattern. Big, 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 big boy. <laughs> big, 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 big boy. Yeah, that's not a bad one. Uh, so what I would try to do is I would try to... Uh, I would jam something in here or this side or that side and I would try to wiggle the step wedge until I could pull it out This big it's not even a step wedge. It's just a regular metal wedge, but probably not made for this and Then there's the nail next to it And I guess I try to wiggle that out as well And then you could just pop this handle off and it's a pretty nice handle Looks wise is it straight not at all Here let me see if I could show you guys how not straight this is let me fix my breasts my bottom breast <laughs> is that what a belly is it's like a big big titty <laughs> a fly just flew in my mouth because i was because of my dirty talk <laughs> here's another cool one uh these are all found in person so um you can find a lot of stuff if you're in the northeast this is a cool little handle, isn't it? It's kind of like a house axe. I think this is less than 18 inch handle. Maybe. You know what? I have an 18. Let's see. Oh yeah, 18. Okay. So this one's 18. So this is a house axe. Phantom bevel house axe. Pretty cool, but stubby and probably a little worn. Um, there's a metal wedge in this one as well. So again, I would try to wiggle that out. I kind of already showed you that. I already talked about that. I don't want to bring this up. Now that I moved on to this. So this is... A, I've actually found multiple house plum house axes. Uh, I have three of them right now, but I found two in person. And very similar. They're in very similar shape. I really like using this for kindling. It's very fun. You can, you can still use it two hands. Um... This is a red maple handle I made. Let's pick this up a little. Red maple. Um, I love this handle. I think it's really nice. 
just how it feels. It's not, you know, maple smooths, uh, maple gets smooth really easy, I feel. Here's something I'm really excited about. This one's just going to take a bit of drilling. So you would drill this wooden wedge out, and then you would try not to damage the top of the tongue as best you can. So you kind of put your, uh, your drift kind of sideways a little, so you're getting as much contact as possible, depending on your drift. I use a, just a big piece of metal to, to drift. It's a flat bar. Um, I forget the dimensions, but it's like three eighths of an inch thick maybe. This is a really cool uh, two-piece axe, by the way. Look at that. Look at that two-piece. It's my favorite. My, probably my favorite thing about um, two-piece axes is that, that they patina and rust at different colors and, and rates. So it shows itself. Instead of doing some kind of chemical bath to show you where one ends and the other begins, it does it naturally with a patina. I think that's just awesome. Crappy handle. One of those Collins handles where the uh, palm swells completely flat on the end. If you, if you go hunting, you know all about these ones. By the way, I got something coming that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'll show this first. Pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to tell you a little history about the uh, last one. So... This is a uh, plum, probably, permabond. What do you do with this? Because permabond is not fun to remove, by the way. It's, uh, this would be straight. Well, it's, it's really bent. I don't know if you could tell how I'm showing you. It's really bent. This is how bent it is. My hand is... Yeah, anyway. Um kind of like a jersey it is a jersey pattern but the newer kind of ones that they didn't care about too much as you can see pretty flat it's clean though what do you think 90s still has the red handle they big 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 uh <laughs> hole they drilled in it that's actually the biggest hole i've ever seen i could put my finger in there a little um yeah i don't know i guess i would drill out the permabond and change the handle or maybe it's a hewing axe <laughs> this thing is offset like a motherfucker <laughs> okay so this is what we all came here for right i'm pretty sure i've identified this as a uh, mckinnon rockaway and it's beat to hell it's completely cooked this is well done <laughs> that was a good timing wasn't it this is well done <laughs> it's james bond timing right there <laughs> Yeah, look, look how scrunched that thing is. But anyway, I wanted to talk about McKinnon's and the Rockaway pattern a little. Uh, I got this PDF from uh, a public ro library. Apparently, Rockaway, New Jersey split up into these different counties or boroughs or something. So, And a lot of history was lost because of that. But I was able to get my hands on a PDF... Um, Crafts, uh, Crafts of New Jersey talks about this in a new PDF, but this is the original talk in 1979 where, um, I forget his name, I'll have to, li I'll, I'll put all the, the information in the description and you can email me ethicalax at gmail.com if you want this PDF. All, all the history I could find on the McKinnons with the help of a, a nice lady over at the public library. Um, I think I might unearth some new stuff about this talk in 1979. Um, it was interesting what the guy was saying. First of all, he was saying Rockaway patterns stopped being made. Or at least he couldn't find any examples of the Rockaway pattern after 1937. Now, the start of the Rockaway pattern, the McKinnons, started in 1845, right? But it was said that the Rockaway pattern had been developed ever since after the Civil War, or not the Civil War, the um, Revolutionary War, I believe. Look at this thing, isn't this cool? I mean, this you could still see that good shape, but it's probably a little worn. This is small. This one feels pretty small, I gotta say. You can see the cracking. I'll get back to the history in a little. We'll look at this a little more. Here, let me turn this up, the uh, brightness. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. All right, there we go. 
you can kind of see the writing. I believe that's a rock. Uh, that's an R right there. So Rockaway, and then maybe W Mc, W McKinnon or W N. The dating is also. They also have a dating uh, range in the uh, PDF that I'm talking about. Look at this really beautiful thin handle. But uh, so he, he said some really interesting things in this in this talk about the Rockaway. First of all, he said he's seen examples of the Rockaway that is the biggest axe he's ever seen produced in America. I thought that was interesting. I don't know how. Now, we were just working with what we know at the time, so that's probably the best he knew at the time. He also said he didn't even know how the jersey pattern got developed. He don't know. He doesn't know where it really came from now. This is uh, probably a jersey. Yeah, this is a jersey pattern. The toe is just a little worn. Um, he doesn't know how this got developed, but he had a really early example of it that he that there's a, a similar illustration in this PDF. I mean, you guys got it. It's like 20 pages. I believe the new PDF from Crafts of New Jersey is like 13 pages, and it is in color, which the old one isn't that I have. Apparently, the, this, the thing that I have, I think, it's called uh, the McKinnons and the Rockaway pattern. I think that's what it's called. Don't, don't quote me. It said, uh, it said he only made 14 of them for his pals. So, oh, there's something on the lens, isn't there? <laughs> hey, what are you on the lens? Hey, get off that lens. Uh-oh. Is my lens broken? I did just, oh, man, guys. I just, I just dropped my camera for the first time. It was... That was bad. So now I'm worried. I see something on the lens. It looks like it's like delaminated almost. Anyway, <laughs> you might be able to see where the uh, carbon steel ends on this, or that's just a, that's just where this was sharpened before, or last. I mean, yeah, the McKinnon's very cool. That so there's a lot of problems with. Uh, these uh, these uh, what are those called when they produce iron forge uh, uh, I don't remember what they're called but they burn down all the time um, these these axe producing guys would be near these places that would need to be on rivers right or or that where they produce the metal I believe they'd be on a river right and then they'd flood all the time so either they'd be burning down or they'd be flooding you get that all throughout history with uh, producers of axes. I find that there's just catastrophe, just catastrophe. I mean, I guess that's why there's only a few American companies left. But what I find is just awful stuff happening to these guys. One of the McKinnons, one of the later McKinnon sons, I th it, maybe he's a grandson, I don't even remember. Um, he got caught up in a polishing belt. He got mangled, he died three years later. I mean, this was tough. It was not easy to make this stuff and uh you would be surprised how low the volume was sometimes for these makers small blacksmiths i mean what would you make a hundred a year some some of them think about that so some of these axes out there aren't branded but there's mystique to them anyway you know where some people are able to do the best investigation uh investigative work and, and they're able to find out where stuff where the blacksmith worked these these small blacksmiths um, I don't, I, I'm very bad at that kind of thing. They're great at that. All I could do is read a PDF that I was sent. <laughs> um, yeah, but isn't this, isn't this cool part of history? Probably from before 1900, but who knows? Could be a little bit after. It certainly wasn't after 1920, this. So uh, another thing about, uh, the McKinnons and, uh, Harvey Blanchard, Harvey Blanchard, which is the last guy that owned it. Uh, he took it after he took it over after that McKinnon died from the polishing incident three years later. I think that's what did uh, you, you know got him, <laughs> did him in. <laughs> it's okay because it's so long ago. You could talk about it like an asshole. No, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I love their axes. So I don't want you know. If the, I would love to talk to you know some relatives of the McKinnon, so I would never. Come on, what, look what they did. But anyway, uh, Harvey Blanchard actually had a bad reputation for his tempering. It might have not been uh, true or not, but I have heard from someone that they said the temper is really hard, like in a bad way. 
Um, I haven't tested any of the tempers. I have another one actually that might be a rock away from a McKinnon. Um, but it's, it's unidentifiable. It might be from the railroad or something. I wonder if you can, guys can read this. You read that? I can't really read it. But I'm pretty sure it's, uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'm like sneaking in up top. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Looks like a peeping Tom. <laughs> anyway, guys, I just wanted to talk about uh, the Rockaway pattern a little and the McKinnons and kind of how, uh, what do you call this, picking? Is this picking when you go find a flea market and offhand, uh, offhand vintage stuff? I don't know how to talk about it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about how I would restore some of this stuff. And what would I do with that McKinnon? Absolutely nothing. That's a beautiful handle. I'm not going to be able to... Oh, and that'll darken up. Oh, this will darken up considerably. This is a really nice handle when it comes to uh, what the patina will look like. This is going to darken up really nice when I oil it up. So this is like a wall hanger now. You can't use it. Although this handle should be a pattern. I mean, look how thin this is. Look at my fingers. So that's where they would be. Isn't that beauty? That's where they would be up top. You know, I do want to talk about something before I go. I like uh, my grip close to the shoulder to be pretty tight. So it does kind of make for a, a big curve sometimes. Instead of this like this slow descent. I kind of really dig in there. Um, so I can hold it kind of tight. But... You know, most people don't care about that thing. They'll hold it up here. That's kind of good enough. Or they'll just deal with it. They just won't hold it tight. I like this because you could hold it. You could kind of hold it tight when it's when your grip is closer together. Now, there is a d diminishing returns. It gets really hard right there where uh, the weight is far down. But, um, yeah, this palm swell is really... Oh, I should show you guys this. Maybe this will help you. Because this is exactly how you'd want to shape a palm swell, a fawn's foot. Wow. Look at that. It's, it's, it's just a slow taper. Interesting. It feels so good. I mean, you really got to use it to know for certain. But that feels really good. Anyway, guys, I'm glad I got a video in because I thought it was going to rain. I was going to be talking about William McKinnon and the McKinnons while I was uh, looking a little... It was going to be a wet t-shirt contest with is it does it can you wear an orange t-shirt to a wet t-shirt contest just asking okay goodbye <laughs> i don't need to finish any of those sentences or or thoughts goodbye everyone thanks for watching